September 30, 1941. Three months after the start of Operation Barbarossa, with which Germany intended to defeat the Soviet Union in a few weeks, the Wehrmacht is still far from achieving its objective. It is specifically on this date of September 30th, when they manage to regroup and launch their final offensive in the direction of Moscow, with winter just around the corner. If they manage to capture the Soviet capital, they may well be able to defeat Stalin and end the war. If they fail, I know they will be left in a very vulnerable situation in the dead of winter, and will give the Soviets oxygen until the following summer. Thus, this offensive called Operation Typhoon that we are going to see below, was the most important of the entire 1941 campaign, and even of the entire Second World War. The armies leading this offensive were Hermann Hoth's 3rd Panzer Army, which attacked north of Vyazma at the height of Moscow, Hobner's 4th Panzer Army, which attacked south of Vyazma, and Guderian's 2nd Panzer Army, which attacked much further south, between Korsk and Bryansk. Although these units were the spearheads of the German army, the 2nd, 4th and 9th armies also joined this attack. It should be noted that the different panzer divisions were far from being at 100%, and they were quite worn out after three months of combat, in which they had barely received reinforcements to cover their losses. For their part, the Soviets were also in a rather unfavorable situation after having lost millions of soldiers in recent months, and they were mobilizing new units at full speed to create new defensive lines. Despite the fact that the entire front line was threatened, it was in the vicinity of Moscow where they concentrated most of their troops so as not to lose their capital. The German attack began overwhelmingly as was customary in those early years of the conflict. In barely a week, the 3rd and 4th Panzer Army surrounded four Soviet armies in Biasma, some 200 kilometers from Moscow. Further south, the 2nd Army, together with Guderian's 2nd Panzer Army, encircled two other Soviet armies at Bryansk. In total, more than 600,000 Red Army soldiers were once again taken prisoner by the Germans. Before this new great victory that they had obtained over their enemy, everything seemed to have ended, and the advance towards Moscow was expected as a simple walk. However, it was not. Despite having lost a third of their troops in just one week, the rest of the Red Army was able to retreat to Moscow, and delay the German advance as best they could. In any case, the tension in Moscow was increasing and the security of the Soviet government was increasingly threatened. On October 16, the Soviet government decided for security reasons in the face of the relentless German advance on its territory, to move the capital of the country from Moscow to Kibyshev, on the banks of the Volga. The meeting also decided to place explosives in factories, bridges, railways and even the Moscow Metro, in anticipation of the Red Army being forced into urban combat. A little later on October 19, a state of siege was declared and Beria brought in several NKVD regiments to restore order by force. Thus, the alarmists and anyone who had participated in a defeatist riot were shot. Meanwhile, the German vanguards continued advancing on Moscow, albeit at a slower pace. Their supply lines were stretched out and on the brink of collapse. In addition, the autumn rains began during the last days of the month, and the roads became muddy, making the German advance more difficult. Even so, by the end of October, the Germans established their front line just 80 kilometers from Moscow, and their new plan was to launch a new pincer offensive that would encircle the city. It was at this time when the Germans were regrouping to launch their final offensive, when on November 6, the first frost began, announcing that the harsh Russian winter was about to fall. However, this was partly positive for the Germans as it hardened the mud and allowed for proper road traffic. On the other hand, many soldiers began to lose their lives due to freezing parts of their bodies, so it was clear that the operation had to end as soon as possible. General Zhukov had arrived in Moscow from Leningrad at the end of October, and was now in command of the city's defense. After mobilizing hundreds of thousands of soldiers and civilians, he had managed to build up to three defensive lines around the city, with which he hoped to stop the Germans. In an attempt to raise morale as much as possible to better face the combat that was to come, Stalin organized a parade in Moscow in which the units that had arrived from Siberia fully equipped participated, among others. 
In addition, Stalin gave a speech in which he made it clear that he had stayed in the city to share his fate with that of all the soldiers and civilians in Moscow, and said that victory over the Germans was going to happen imminently. This being the situation, the new German offensive began on November 17. This time, 3rd Panzer Army would attack north of Moscow, 4th Panzer Army would charge frontally into the city, and Guderian's 2nd Panzer Army would charge from the south. The German advance lasted until December 5, this being the moment in which the Red Army began its counteroffensive. In any case, during these almost 20 days of advance in which the extreme weather conditions had already made an appearance, the 3rd Panzer Army was able to position itself only 30 or 40 kilometers from Moscow. On the other hand, Guderian had achieved a great break in the Soviet front, and by December 5 he was already very close to Ryazan. However, he was almost 170 kilometers southeast of Moscow. At the same time as this was taking place, further south at Rostov, the German army suffered its first major setback of the entire campaign, and this set off all the alarm bells. So much so, that Hitler himself appeared on the southeastern front to ask for explanations about what was happening, and that he did not believe possible. This took place on December 3rd and cost Field Marshal Rundstedt his dismissal. While this crisis could be resolved by going back a bit, the worst was yet to come. It was specifically on December 5th when the Soviets began their great counteroffensive in Moscow, completely ending the last German hopes of ending the war on the Eastern Front. In any case, even if this strong counteroffensive had not taken place, it was clear that the exhausted German armies were not going to be able to complete the encirclement of Moscow, nor would they be able to enter the city during that harsh month of December. However, this counteroffensive brought with it a clear message that Hitler's headquarters had not wanted to accept. This news was that the Red Army was far from exhausted, and therefore defeated, and that its military capacity to continue launching offensives with hundreds of thousands of soldiers was still at full capacity. The first phase of the Soviet offensive consisted of attacking the German vanguards both to the north and to the south of Moscow, the troops being launched against Guderian's 2nd Panzer Army being more numerous. A few days later, other armies that were just to the west of Moscow also began strong offensives against the 4th Panzer Army that was protecting the sector. Faced with these attacks that took place on December 5, 1941, and on January 7 of the following year, the Germans could not do anything but retreat. The German units that were already in static mode in front of Moscow were the ones that withstood the Soviet onslaught the most, but the 3rd and 2nd Panzer armies, which were taken on the wrong foot, completely sank. This caused a large salient in the central sector of the Eastern Front during that first week of 1942, which threatened to pocket hundreds of thousands of German soldiers around Vyazma. For their part, the Germans had received orders not to retreat a single meter at the front, but it was clear that the Soviet threat was so strong that it could not be ignored. Thus, the Soviet attack with the objective of pocketing the German armies that were located in front of Moscow, began on December 7, and managed to make a great penetration through the city of Rzev and through Ostishkov. On the other hand, the southern pincer in the vicinity of Kaluga also advanced, although it did so at a slower pace. However, by the end of the month, the situation became very critical for the Germans when the two frontal breakouts that the Soviets had made northwest of Moscow came together and began to advance towards Smolensko, at the same time the southernmost German defenses were also crumbling. By mid-February, it can be said that the vast majority of German troops that three months earlier had participated in the final assault against Moscow were practically surrounded in a large rectangular pocket near the vicinity of Iasma. And it is that to tell the truth, it barely connected by two small corridors with the rest of the units of the Center Army Group. As we can see on the map, by the beginning of March the central sector of the Eastern Front was a real headache, in which something similar to a German double horn was inserted in the Soviet lines. However, despite everything, the Germans were finally able to consolidate their defensive lines and there was no further setback in the months that followed. As soon as spring arrived, they were able to reduce the Soviet troops that had been isolated in their rear, and also cut off the Soviet salient that practically reached Vyazma. From there, 
the Soviets launched a series of offensives that would become known as the Battles of Rezev. Thus, the new German front line was located approximately 150 kilometers from Moscow, and it remained so until at the beginning of 1943, when Model had to abandon said salient to send troops to the fighting that was taking place around Kharkov. Although the Germans led the Soviets to believe that in the summer of 1942 they would launch an attack on Moscow again, the truth is that there was no new attempt to assault the capital of the Soviet Union. It is estimated that this great battle for Moscow that runs from the end of September 1941 to February 1942, caused some 400,000 casualties for Germany and just over a million for the Red Army. Despite the fact that this battle is not as attractive or widespread as that of Stalingrad or Korsk, it was undoubtedly the key battle of World War II, and its outcome marked all future actions. Well, I sincerely hope you liked this program. If you want to see how the huge Mars operation that the Soviets launched against this reserve salient was like, I leave you the program in the description, along with Carlos Caballero Jurados in which we saw the entire evolution of Barbarossa. Thank you all for being part of this community, and especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and we'll see each other here as always, next Thursday and Sunday. See you soon.